Hi, my little butterflies. I'm sure you guys all know this is the broken mirror. And I'll repeat one last time. If you haven't watched the chapters before this one, they're linked in the description. So go watch them. Now, this chapter, it'll put you through some things. Trust us. Anyway, this story was written by Lazy January and yours truly, moi. The art was done by Lazy, and I'll be playing the narrator and Adrian slash Chat Noir. I'll be voicing Marina slash Ladybug, Alia, and Tiki. I'll be voicing Nino and Sabine. Now, chapter five. We're just friends. Marinette always remembered the day she met Chat Noir, how she fell on top of him and they got tied together, being suspended in the air with her yo-yo, how she was such a klutz and couldn't even say her name without messing up, how he wasn't afraid to tease her. Not only was that her most embarrassing moment with him, it was one of her favorites. She loved the way his eyes gleamed in the dark, the way he never left her, the childish smirk he always had on, the way he would do anything for her, his golden hair, and even the stupid jokes and puns. Now, the only problem is, does she tell him? Marinette grabbed the key off her desk and opened the case she made for her diary and got up, walking to the closet. She rummaged through it, pulling out a few boxes, including the miracle box, before reaching the back where the small case, case rested. She seized it and slid the key in, turning it until it clicked, releasing the lock. Marinette opened the diary, flipped through a couple of pages before stopping on a random page and reading it. May 21st, 2016. Adrian Agress. He's the best. I love him. I just love the way he walks, talks, and models. His hair, his eyes, he's just perfect. On the other hand, we have Chenoir. He almost made us lose against the villain today. Sometimes I think I'd be better off if I asked Master Fu to switch him. Maybe to Adrian? But then again, I'd be too distracted over him and instead of fighting the villain like I'm supposed to. So maybe it's not a good idea. Why does it have to be so difficult? I just wish I could tell Adrian everything, and we could beat it together and have three kids and a house and a hamster. She paused while thinking about how much she obsessed over him. The elaborate plans, the stuttering, the clumsiness. Did she even really love him? I mean, sure, she knew everything about him from his favorite book to his shoe size, but were those actually the things that we need to know to love someone? But she knew Adrian, right? A worldwide famous model, rich dad, or owner of a famous brand, could get rid of a job in fashion. She sat and thought for a few minutes before staring at the board that had Adrian's schedule. It hit her then. This isn't love. This is an obsession. She closed the diary with a sigh of frustration. She'd been living a lie. How could she be sure Chat Noir was any different? I didn't love him. She whispered. Who? Tiki asked. Adrian, I, I didn't love him. I, I was trying to use him. She breathed, wrapping her arms around herself. I was in love with him for the wrong reasons. But you did love him, Marinette. That's why you wanted him to love you back so badly. Of course you say that. You can't love. She snapped, forgetting at the moment she said it. I'm so sorry, Tiki. No, you're right. I don't know what you're going through. Marinette, your friends are here! Her mother called. The movie, how could she forget? Got it, Mom! Marinette called back. She got up, putting the diary into the box and shoving it back into the closet. She straightened her outfit and grabbed her purse, opening it for Tiki to fly into. Marinette opened the trap door and walked down the stairs to see familiar faces. Alia, Nino, Adrian. She guessed the others were already there. You ready to go, Marinette? Oh, you asked. Yep, let's go. She replied, not bothering to say hi to the others, especially Adrian. They walked out of the bakery before Nino spoke. We got 20 minutes to get there, and it takes 10 minutes to walk over there, and we still need to grab some snacks as well. Wait, what movie are we watching again? Marinette asked. Uh, Ladybug and Chat Noir, the movie, at the Sobonte Cinema, on Sunday at 10 a.m. Adrian replied, reading it off his phone. Great. Guess what she needed? A whole movie about the guy she's in show about her feelings for at the same place they were at last flirting at. Getting over him just became a million times harder. This movie is gonna be great! I can feel it! Alia squealed. Yep. Simply the best. Marinette muttered. Marinette felt behind the third, not one new engaging in conversation at the moment. For some reason, Adrian noticed this and joined her. She kept her head lowered. You okay, Marinette? He asked. She turned her head to look at him. Definitely. She said through a forced smile. If you're not feeling up to it, we could do something else, Adrian suggested, picking up on the fact that Marinette was most definitely not okay. 
I said I'm fine. She said a little more for herself, turning back to the sidewalk ahead of them. Right, um, how's the dress coming along? He asked, changing the topic. She furrowed her brow, turning back to him once more. How did you... Sorry, uh, Alia told me about the dress you were making. He explained, rubbing the back of his neck, something Marinette often found him doing. She sighed. Oh, it's, uh, not as far along as I hoped it'd be. Do you think it'll be ready? For prom? Not unless I find a way to freeze time to work on it. She chuckled. Do you need help with it? He asked. She realized he was serious about it. Or not unless you know how to sew. She joked, knowing full well someone like Adrian wouldn't have a need to sew. Guess not as helpful as I thought I'd be, he laughed. They turned a corner and saw the theater straight ahead. Alia turned around to the two. Nino and I are sitting next to each other, so you two will be together. She's smart. I'm done with the elaborate plans, Alia. Marinette thought. Great, Marinette said with a smile. It was going to be great. Two friends sitting together because they're just friends. This is not an elaborate plan to get Adrian to fall in love with her, if that wasn't already established. They walked inside and checked in their tickets before walking to their theater number and going inside. The four found their seats, Alia sitting next to Nino, followed by Adrian, and then finally Marinette. Their commercials finished and the movie started. The movie really shows the flirting between Ladybug and Chat Noir, making Marinette blush every time he said something that the real Chat would. She hoped no one noticed, but she was pretty sure no one could see the slight discoloration in her cheeks in the darkness of the theater. The movie ended with Ladybug and Chat Noir defeating Hawkmoth and kissing. It made Marinette slightly uncomfortable, thinking about the night they kissed. It was a reminder that they still had to talk about it, something she'd been dreading. It'd have to be done that night, opposed to waiting another month or three. What do you think of the movie, Mari? Alia asked. It was pretty good, actually. You know romantic comedies usually suck, but this was better than most. Alia raised her eyebrows. Are you sure it doesn't have to do with anything else? Uh, of course not. Marinette hesitated. Personally, I think they made Shadow War a little too goofy, Adrian added. What makes you say that? Marinette inclined. Er, he just doesn't seem like the type to clown around, he quickly said. His choice of words made Marinette think of Chat Noir. Maybe it was the fact that they were talking about him. So you're saying you know him personally? Alia smirked, seeing the blonde fall apart from the questions. No, not, not at all, he stammered. Come on, Alia, you're gonna make the boy explode! Nina said, pulling her away from Adrian and Marinette. Well, Ollie and I are gonna go back to her place. You guys are on your own. And with that, they turned to leave. So, what do you suppose we do? He asked, turning his attention to Marinette. You're not helpful to sewing, so I'm on my own for that. She teased. Well, I probably have to get back home. My father's expecting me. Here at the back of his neck. Right. I'll see you tomorrow? He tilted his head as if seeing something in her that no one else saw. Mm-hmm. She hummed while nodding. See you tomorrow, Adrian. She turned her heel and walked in the direction of the bakery, glancing over her shoulder to see Adrian walking in the other direction. She turned a quarter before deciding it was safe to open her purse. Tiki poked her head out. Are you going to talk to Chat Noir? I kind of have to now, don't I? She hesitated. A little bit. Tiki responded. All right, then let's work on my dress first. She suggested, hoping Tiki didn't notice the sudden change in plans. They arrived at the bakery and Marinette opened the door with the sound of the bell. Ah, Marinette. Her mother exclaimed. How was the movie? She asked, setting a tray of croissants down. It was pretty good. She replied with a fond look. Well, I have to finish my dress, so... She slid past her mother and up the many, many stairs to her room. She opened the trap door and stepped through into her room. Marinette hung up her purse on her chair and plopped onto it, crossing her legs. She sighed and got to work. The dress was only a quarter done and prom was getting closer. This year, Collège Francois Dupont was hosting a combined junior slash senior prom. 
she would get to attend if she finished her dress. Many hours later, Marinette, who fell asleep on her desk, awoke to the sound of commotion outside. Marinette checked the time on her phone, 11.17 p.m. She dragged herself out of the chair and to the nearest window. To her surprise, Chatnoir was fighting Lollipop Boy just outside. She whipped her head around, searching for Tiki. She locked eyes on her and said in a slightly elevated voice, Tiki, we have to go! The Kwame's eyes opened and she flew up to Marinette. Tiki is spot on! Ladybug sprinted up to her balcony and jumped down to where Chat Noir was. I was wondering when you joined me, m'lady, he exclaimed. Sorry, I fell asleep. She said quickly. They got to work to defeat the Senti Monster for the hundredth time. Seems Hawkmoth is really into reacumatizing people. Chat Noir chuckled after Ladybug purified the amok and set everything back to how it originally was. Ladybug laughed awkwardly and braided her gaze to the floor of the building roof they were standing on. You okay, lady? Yep, just awesome. She stuttered. Are you sure? You've been awfully quiet this whole time. Chat Noir continued, stepping close to her, only a foot apart. Uh -huh. She paused, holding her arms against herself. Shisha, we need to talk. She managed to say. His eyes widened. Are you sure? Because the last time we talked to you, she abruptly looked at him and then covered his mouth with her hand. Please don't make this harder than it has to be. She took a deep breath and dropped her hand from his mouth. Look, the other day, I, I didn't mean to kiss you. It, it just happened. So you're saying the kiss meant nothing? Exactly. She smiled before frowning again. I don't want to play with your feelings. Or mine. She thought. So, all the flirting, did it also mean nothing? He asked. I... well, no, it's just too risky for us. She finished quietly. So we're just going to pretend nothing happened, that we don't have feelings for each other, that we're not in love? Chat Noir scoffed. She hadn't realized that that was what she was saying. I... She started saying, but then shut her mouth. You really have nothing to say, he said. She opened her mouth to speak again. Shut, I do care about you, I just- Save it, I'm leaving. He turned to leave. Shall we- Stopped. I, I do like you. His eyes perked up and he turned his head to face her. I like you more than I thought, but you know we have responsibilities and duties as heroes. I wouldn't want to put you in danger. You know, I'll do anything for you. He stepped towards Ladybug, their lips inches apart. She wanted to say something, but couldn't think of anything. Instead, she just stood there and nodded. Chat Noir leaned down and pressed his lips against hers. She shivered from the wind, and Chat Noir pulled her closer, his body heat seeping into hers. She brought her hands to his head and twirled her fingers in his hair. She savored the time they had this close together. They broke apart after a minute, gasping for air, resting their foreheads on each other. I'm sorry. Ladybug breathed. We're even now. Chat Noir chuckled. Until this is all over. Just friends? She asked in a whisper. Just friends. He repeated and pressed a kiss to her hand. He picked a red, he picked a red rose off the planter beside them and offered it to her. Until next time, my friend. She took it before Chat Noir jumped off the roof and vaulted himself into the air. Her eyes stung. She wanted to cry, but she knew it wouldn't do any good. Until next time, Chaton. She smiled softly to herself as a tear escaped her eyes and dropped onto her cheek. She suppressed her feelings as she zipped through the city once again, the cold air nipping at her face, the streaks of tears even colder. She landed on the balcony and let her transformation wear off, the red Kwame appearing out of her earrings. Marinette held the rose to her chest. Why does he have to be so perfect? She complained. Was that a pun, Marinette? Marinette gasped. What is happening to me? I think you know exactly what's going on. Tiki said, flying up to her cheek. Yeah, I, I think I do. She said, then touched her lips. The feeling of her Satan's lips on her cemented into her head. <laughs> Marinette always remembered the date. <laughs> 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 Someone is at the front door. 
Okay. She sees it. So... I just wish I should. <laughs> I just. <laughs> She paused while thinking about what she, how much she, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> she paused. <laughs> she sat and thought for a few minutes before staring at the board that she, <laughs> she sat. Not really. Oh <laughs> I had to get into character. That was like the one line I remember I had. Not really. <laughs> Not really, <man. laughs> She said a little. She said a little bit more. Mm. Oh, it's uh, not as far as I'd hope it'd be. Oh my god, not. <laughs> she joked, knowing full well someone like Adrian wouldn't have the need to snow. Snow? No, he's not snowing. He's not a cloud. Her mother explain exclaimed, "No, what the heck? I can't talk." Her okay. mother explained. Oh my, not, it's not explained. What the heck? This year, college, college okay, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> this year, college, <laughs> many hours later, Marinette, who fell asleep on Huh, maybe it was a bad idea to do that. She locked eyes and on, <laughs> she locked eyes on her and said it slightly, oh my God, why is this line so hard? She liked, she locked eyes on her 